We often do a Google search to find what we're looking for, but how often are we Googling at the job? The answer might surprise you. Hi everybody, it's Samantha, Sydney, and Mo, and we're back with another episode that you don't wanna miss on the Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we talk about how to grow your career in an industry that was not designed with us in mind. We'll be diving deep into this topic, but before we do, if you're loving this podcast, make sure you share it with a friend or a coworker. So at the job, we're usually Googling a lot. A lot of people believe that software engineers know everything, but we don't. <laughs> Sometimes we have to Google things. What was something that y'all Googled last week? Mm -hmm. What was something that I Googled two hours ago? Something with CSS Grid, where it was like centering a div. It was where I needed to push an element down to the next row or something because the box needed to be super small. Yeah, I was struggling with that hard. So that was fun. And thank goodness for that CSS Grid documentation that I always go to on Google, so. <laughs> I use the grid, CSS grid visual layout site. So like I, that's what works for me. Cause I actually never learned CSS grid. So I'm just like, Google it real quick. Honestly, it works. I feel ya. What about you, Mo? So I don't want to be ashamed, but I'm just gonna humble myself in this moment. I still Google every time and I should have like a cheat sheet, but every time, whenever I need to like upstream my Git branch, <laughs> or get branch switch like stuff like that <laughs> every time it's yes just like i know what it is but do i really let me just really quickly like what's a git command for <laughs> yeah like i feel so bad every time that i need to do this especially when i'm pairing like it is so embarrassing because there's like two ways to do it right and they're like you should just do it the git way because doing it in vs code can be like sometimes very overwhelming and it's like i don't remember it that way <laughs> i can't do it in ui at all i always google how to like uncommit a commit that's the one that i have like on bookmark because i know i'm never gonna remember that but i use it all the time so instead of stashing things i commit it get stash is the hero yeah i get stash but i, I commit it and then uncommit it <laughs> as my stash but i'm terrible <laughs> have y'all ever thought about making a blog post about the things that you're constantly googling you know i really should should. I think about it all the time. And maybe there's like a lack of confidence that my stuff would like get seen by the right people when they need it. But that doesn't make any sense considering that I Google different things all the time. And when I learn something, it's just so great to like put it out there and for me to like talk about it on Twitter, or, like share it with my partner and things. So I think that I just need to go for it and just see what happens. <laughs> no, I would not do a blog post. I love that. I haven't made a blog post like tutorial wise. You wouldn't. Why not? Because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of what I'm Googling. I don't want people to know. <laughs> I shouldn't be ashamed, but no, I am don't low be ashamed. Key ashamed sometimes I'm like dang and that might be some of that the imposter syndrome that comes from me from being an untraditional background from not being a computer science degree so I'm like but then it's always relieving when I have like a colleague be like I google the same thing and it could be somebody who has like a master's in computer science I'm like oh okay Ooh, all right, we're good, we're good. We're in the same boat. So like, I have feelings about that. Like, I know that this episode isn't about like computer science degrees and things, but like, it's so interesting where people are like, you should know this or like, I hate feeling embarrassed about like having to Google stuff because I know for a fact with like computer scientists, that's the science of like software. So like that doesn't necessarily always apply to software engineering with people like that can be a totally different thing and so that is weird that people are judgmental about you not having a computer science degree and they're doing research and stuff like it's the concept in research in which you have that degree you know so like that's so frustrating that's like a whole other can of worms but i get it i totally get it where it can be embarrassing just mm, just that's frustrating but it may not be that they're being judgmental. It's just probably internally. I think it's internally to me. It may not be that they're judgmental, but yeah. it's like my <laughs> I get it. that I feel like that they're looking at me for that. I don't know. 
But yeah, Google is my, that's my right hand man. We all three Google things. So don't feel embarrassed about Googling. It's fine. We all do it. I don't think we like to talk about it, but we do it. Usually when I have a problem, I will actually Google it maybe for like 10 minutes and I get bored of Googling. So I'm notorious for just asking questions in the company Slack channel as quick as possible. Maybe because I'm lazy. I'm like, I know somebody has the answer. Let me not struggle through it. But I like to time box things like if I can't figure this out in like 15 minutes, let me go to the next step, asking the company Slack channel what to do here. If they can't figure it out, throw some time on people's calendars and make them figure it, <laughs> figure it out. So Googling things, is it a bad thing or a good thing that you have to Google? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Like, that's a weird stereotype that people think that it's a bad thing. Like when you have a question, at like any type of job that may not be documented in things or it's just like something random that you need to know. Even when we were in school and things like we had to Google stuff, we had to find ways to like reference things because software engineers like they are getting paid to have the experience of figuring out things. We don't just like know what we're supposed to be doing all of the time, how we're supposed to build different things. We have taken the rules that apply to creating software and we are literally combining those different structures of those rules together. And sometimes we either don't remember how a structure works we either have never seen that before, somebody else has never seen it before, but our company is asking us to do it. So like, how else are we gonna do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of times as we advance our careers, our problems seem to get a little bit harder. And there are not like these good tutorials anymore on the problems that we're trying to solve. So we have to like Google and we actually have to be pretty good at Googling. What tips do y'all have on knowing how to Google. I think that's a skill set you build. I don't know if you can teach it because it all depends on your niche, like whatever you're working in, you know, those keywords that you have to put in the Google search along with another keyword to get exactly what you need. And a lot of times I know people will Google what they want and then make sure they put on their the holy grail of the sites to go to. Like the error, like the nay, like medium or stack overflow, stack is it that it? Yeah, stack overflow. So yeah, so a lot of people, people would know to Google with those keywords and then to add stack overflow to that search and they can really narrow it down that way with their Google. Or if they're gonna Google something that's like, I'm very Microsoft based because it's government. So I always like, to throw the word Microsoft in there so I can go to Microsoft documentation or Microsoft blogs that people who are already like experts and often may have came across this um, issue before. I like the fact that you throw in Microsoft and probably like narrows down the search. So I wanted to try a small little exercise with y'all to see like what topics you would search for. Let's say that you wanted to put a square on the page and put it on the left side and have it stay there and never move. What would be some things that you would Google to get that to, to work out in your favor? I would say right away, CSS fix square. Like that would be like the first things, like I know it's a CSS thing. Fix square like right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or static, or some people like to say static. But I'm looking this up right now, see what's the first things that come out. Oh no. <laughs> So a square div with a fixed height, only using CSS. I am Googling what you said to see what comes up first. We're doing a little fun exercise. <laughs> a square div with a fixed height using only CSS. I think it's a good start. What about you, Sydney? What would you say? Yeah, I think that I would do the same, like fixed right height probably, or fixed position right. That's probably what I would do first. <laughs> That position would be good. Yeah. Yep, no, yep. these are great. I have to think like position because that's one of the attributes. I love these ideas. See, like it's not like a zero to 100 thing. You have to try a bunch of things until you find that good answer. But Stack Overflow is great. Is it okay to copy and paste those answers into the code base? Okay, so I recently put out a video slightly talking about this. We have to be really careful with 
students like just copying and pasting code and just kind of like giving them a prayer and like seeing if it works because the thing about software engineers is that we don't get paid to just like copy and paste code we get paid to know what to copy and paste inside of our code. So there's an element of knowing potentially the different combinations to Google, but then also being able to sift through the stuff that is irrelevant for us to read over the code that fits into our exact scenario and then bring whatever section of code that we found, paste it maybe into our environment and then figuring out of whether or not it works so we can like fine tune it for our needs. So I don't know, there's an art to it. (laughs) There's a lot of art to it. There is an art to it, but I also believe depending on your level is when you should like start copying and pasting blinds. I think if you are a beginner in tech, trying to understand what's going on in this Slack overflow post will stop you from actually completing your project. Because I, I have seen so many times where the engineer is like, oh, how does this line work? How does this line work? But the object is to get the project done. And then hopefully, as engineers, we solve the same problems over and over again. So eventually, you keep seeing the same problem. Then eventually, you're going to learn it. I just don't want people to say, oh, I can't copy and paste this because I need to know every single line of code. You can learn eventually as you go on so i would say like you can learn like as you're refining the code that you're like copying and pasting like you might not need to know necessarily everything like in the documentation or like in the answer but again like there still needs to be a structure for like reading what you're doing and so that's kind of the double-edged sword where i have to be like wait a minute like i get it but like let's not just like copy it in there save it and then call it a day because that doesn't necessarily solve the problem so (laughs) There's that balance. (laughs) There's definitely a balance, but we got our jobs. We're putting in code and you're listening to the Deeper Than Tech podcast. Until next time. Bye.